going to, um, I had to switch. Um, I had to switch. I don't know what I call it. I couldn't use my phone, so I had to use my Mac. So I hope this works. Um, on Siri, my Siri, what is it called? Whatever it's called. Whatever the operating system is on that. You can't use Facebook Live. So I had to log into Chrome. So hopefully this will work this morning. Amen. So good morning. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Evangelist Johnson. Let's go into the word as we are at 507. That's a blessed number. Good morning, Rochelle. Good morning. Well, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Um, again, we thank you, Father, that you own the air. You own the air. We thank you. We thank you. The enemy thinks that he's in control, but you are in control. And so, God, we thank you for always making a way, giving us another way. And so, Lord, we thank you for that this morning. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. There is absolutely, positively none like you, Daddy. And so, Lord, we thank you for your word that is going to fall upon good ground. And it will penetrate, God, into the hearts, into the souls of your people, God. I pray that someone will be blessed this morning by this word as they understand how to go from good to great. We bless your name this morning, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me know if you can hear me. Um, as you know, I play worship music while I teach. It just helps to uh, keep me um, focused on God and in the spirit of the Lord. And if he wants to move prophetically, uh, worship opens those airways. So uh, let me know if the music is too loud in the background so I can turn it down. We are in John chapter 2 this morning. John chapter 2, the word of the Lord is blessed because the word is Jesus. Amen. And so I wanted to talk to us this morning about going from good to great. What does that mean and what does that look like? Amen. And so we know the story of the wedding and how uh, they go to the wedding of Galilee and uh, Jesus turns water into wine. And the word of the Lord says in, in verse two, it says, and both Jesus and his disciples were invited to this wedding. So mama was already going, but they invited Jesus. And it said that this may have been a relative of his. And so the word says, when the wine was gone, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no more wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, woman, what is it? What is that to do with me? What is, what does that have to do with me that they don't have any wine? And his, his mother said to the servant, she didn't even, you know, he said, my time has not yet come. It has not come for me to interject myself uh, supernaturally through miracles into folks' lives. At this, that, that's why you're coming to me. And so she doesn't even respond to him. She says, because she knows her son, you know, y'all who are mamas, y'all know y'all kids, because y'all have said something, y'all know that they're going to they gonna do what you said. Even though she didn't direct him, good morning, Evie, on what to do. She just turns to the service and says, whatever he says for you to do, do it. I, for years, have, have said this long before Praise God, I've heard other people say it, but it's the truth. Uh, there is nothing new under the sun. And so this text, actually, I contend that this is where Nike got just do it. Because because uh, Mary said, whatever Jesus tells you to do, you do that. You just do whatever he tells you to do. And then we know uh, Stephen Covey uh, created a concept of teaching that went around the world and created planners and everything from it called First Things First. And we know that Matthew says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Well, we also know that Stephen Covey, I think he's a, is he a seven-day Adventist? Or was he, 
I can't remember. But ain't nothing new under the sun. Amen. Thank you for those hearts. Give me some, give us some hearts this morning. Help us all stay connected and, and awake. and teaching and so the word goes on to say that now there were six stones of water pots water pots and it literally had water uh and, he, and so the jews were accustomed to using these purification pots in ceremonies and so the bible says for washing and so those pots were probably actually used in the ceremony of washing to prepare for that wedding for that couple to come into holy matrimony. And so the Bible says that Jesus says, now rem remember, his mother didn't say turn the water in the wine. She just said, hey, they ran out of wine. But the next thing you know, Jesus then looked over there and saw these pots. And he says, fill it up to the brim. Now those pots could hold 20 to 30 gallons of water. And he says, fill them up to the brim. Says, fill them all the way up to the top. And so they do that. The servants do that. And so they fill it up. And then Jesus <laughs> says to them, now draw some and take it to the head waiter, which which uh, the head waiter of the, of the banquet. Now, some have said they took it to the actual groom's, the uh, bride's father. But I believe they did give it to the head waiter because he was the cup bearer. He had to taste it. So he tasted it before it was either taken to the groom or to the bride's father for him to taste it. So somewhere between them filling up the, the pots and them dipping it in to taste it, it had turned into wine. And so the cup bearer, the head waiter, takes it to either the groomsman again or the father and he says hey this is the this is the best wine he said now don't y'all wait till the end don't you wait till the end to serve the best wine he said but we're at the beginning of the wedding and they're already serving the best i want to talk to you this morning about going from good to great he said this is some great wine and we're serving the best the greatest thing up front don't you normally wait until the end god has a word for someone this morning he is no it is not necessarily necessary for you to wait to go from good to great anymore you're waiting on this person to finish what they started or you're waiting for that person to have their turn you're waiting for other people or you're saying it's just not my time yet but god says i want to take you from good to great. Now is your time to go from good to great. Oh, you're good. You're good at singing. You're good at baking. You're good at teaching. You're good at preaching. You're good as a mom. You're good as a dad. You're good as a husband. You're good as a wife. But God wants to take you from good to great. And the thing that is required to go from good to great, somebody needs to recognize in you that there's greatness. There's something lacking. What's lacking? What's lacking in you this morning? Is it your study? Is it your study? Do as a minister of the gospel, as a preacher, as a teacher, a prophet, evangelist, apostle, is it your prayer life? Is it your study? What is it that God wants to have you work on today so you can go from good to great? You're a cook. You're a chef. You're a baker, you know, you're, you're um, gifted in those things. But God wants to take you from good. Oh, this is good. Yes, it is. But God wants someone to say, that's great. That's a great, you are a great cook. You are a great teacher. You are a great preacher. You are a great mom. What is it that you need to do? Do you need to spend more time in prayer? God, teach me how to do this with my family and this for my husband and this for my spouse. What is it that you need to do to go? Because see, they were lacking something at this wedding. They were lacking something. And someone recognized it. And someone spoke to it. This morning, I speak to your greatness. I speak to your greatness. 
And I ask Jesus to come, the Holy Spirit to be stirred up in you, to touch you this morning so that you can go from good to great. Invite someone into this, tag someone into this because you have friends who are stuck. You feel like you're stuck, that there is another level that God is calling you to in your life. Right through here. That some God is calling you to in your life and you're like how do i how do i get to that it's something that's missing it's something that you probably need to do i say it all the time you are not god is not waiting you are not waiting on god god is waiting on you there is something that god is requiring of you to do something to give up something to add to it is something that God is requiring of you to do for you to go to the next level, to go from good to great. No, everybody's not going to be a millionaire. Everybody's not going to be uber goober, amen, rich, right? Or wealthy. But God doesn't want you to struggle from paycheck to paycheck. That was not his plan. He said, it is uh, he said, above all, I wish that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers, even as your mind, your will, and your emotions prosper, even as you grow in God and you mature in God and you become perfect in the things of God. That word perfect means mature. He wants you to grow. And so as you grow, God wants to add to you. And as you are adding to your faith, God is adding to you. And you will go from faith to faith and glory to glory. What is it that God needs to add to you, that he needs to touch, that you need to present to him to say, this is the pot that I need you, that I want you to feel. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to feel me, feel me afresh and then touch me, Lord. Touch me so I can go from good to great. You're a great, you're a good writer. You're a good writer, but God wants you to be a great writer. You're a good singer, but God wants you to be a great singer. Maybe he has an album in you. He has a book in you. He has another career in you, another direction. He wants you to go in your career and you're staying right there because you're saying this is good enough. But God's saying, I have more. I don't understand. I don't understand why people think good is enough. Do you know good in school is a C? That's average. Good. You did a good job. <laughs> That's a C. Good morning, Brother Benson. That's a C. But, okay, above average, C+. Plus. So you, you're a little better than good. But God wants you to recognize that he put greatness in you. Greatness is in me? Somebody? Yeah, absolutely. Greatness is in you. You know how we know greatness is in you? Because Jesus is in you. Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. He's a great God. We sing the songs, right? Did we forget that greatness is in us? Greater is he that is within you than anything that is in this world. There's greatness in you. And God is calling you to be great. He's calling you to be great. Listen, when you when you are sick in your body and the enemy is tempting you with a diagnosis, be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute now. Greatness is in me. I speak to the greatness in me, not the sickness in me, not the diagnosis that is in me, not the lack that I'm in the middle of. God wants you to be reminded that greatness is in you and he wants to take you from good to great. So what is that journey? of good to great look like today? Well, we see here in scripture, as I already alluded to, someone has, someone speaks to the greatness. Someone speaks to the more. Someone speaks to, uh, there is something lacking. Something lacking. You have a business and, and I don't know, maybe you spend eight hours a day you know, doing your research and getting out there looking for opportunities. Maybe you need to step it up to 10. What's lacking? I really want you to be conscious, diligent, to ask yourself these questions. 
if I want to go from good to great in that, whatever that is for you, what do I need to do, Lord? Show me. Show me what do I need to do to go from good to great in that, in your health, in how um, you want to have you want to have a better better health. You want you want to lose weight. You want to have better health. You want to. So what do I need to do? Well, maybe you're walking 30 minutes. Now you got to step it up to 45 to an hour. Maybe it's what you're eating. You got to take, you know, you know, hey, some Atkins diet. I don't know what it is. I'm not telling you what diet. But if you know that you have to lose weight, then maybe you have to stop eating some things or take some things out of your diet so you can have great health. Again, above all, I wish that you would prosper, you personally, and be in good health, be in great health, even as your soul prospers. The word prosper itself means great. It means better. It, it's a progressive word. Prospering is going from good to great, from faith to faith, glory to glory. It's going higher. When you prosper, you're always going higher. You're always going to bigger, better, greater, more. And that's what God wants. You had a good relationship with that dude. You had a good relationship with that girl, with that sister. But God wants you to have a great relationship. I remember saying to the Lord some time ago, I said, God, you know, I thank you. I thank you. I've had good relationships. And some of them <laughs> didn't end, end well. Um, and I, I declare that those men are good men for that woman. Amen. They just weren't a great man for me. And I remember the Lord saying, if you are pursuing greatness, why do you settle? And this is nothing against those men, nothing at all. But why do you settle for a man who only wants minimal? You want great, but he wants minimal. You going after God hard to set me on fire and set me ablaze and anoint me afresh and you're, you're praying and and in a season, I literally, I would put myself on an extensive fast. And I'm, I'm feeling like I need to go back to that. That might be one of the things that's lacking in me. I need to go back to my own personal extensive fast. And he said, why would you settle for mediocre, for minimal, for good when I'm calling you to greatness? I'm calling you to greatness. If the Bible says that God told Abraham, I will make your name great. I'm not necessarily going to make you great, but I'm going to make your name great. Your name will be renowned because when you're, when, when someone speaks your name, they're going to speak of your character. They're going to speak of your intelligence. They're going to speak of your ability to articulate the word of God and speak the word of God and be a witness for God and be able to say, thus saith the Lord. And so make my name great. Somebody say that this morning, make my name great. I don't just want to be great. Make my name great because my name is going to represent you. When somebody speaks of Yvette, when someone speaks of Pamela, when someone speaks of uh, of of Alan, when someone speaks of Maria, when someone speaks of Tracy, when someone speaks of Destiny, they're going to say, that's a woman of God. That's a man of God. Make my name great and keep my character right so that my your association with me ha, and my association with you is always good. It's always great. It's always favorable. Make my name great, Lord. Hallelujah. That my name and your name, because I'm connected to you, because I'm a part of you, you're a part of me. I'm in you and you're in me. That you go before me. Make my name great. Ah, God, make my name great. Give me a name that is integral. Give me a name that is, is, is representative of what it looks like to be a Christian. Not all stiff and, and, and can't have fun and feel like you can't do life and you just broke down and sad and nobody, I don't want that Jesus. I want a Jesus that's going to make me great. I want a Jesus that, that I feel good because I'm a part of his family. And when people look at me, they're like, that's a great woman. That's a great man right there. Make me great. Make my name great, God. Because when, 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 you, when you feel good, you, you just... There's something about it. Good God Almighty. 
when, when somebody say your name, I, I tell young people all the time, particularly those who are in the school and they have biblical names. I tell them, what, what does your name mean? Do you know there's greatness in you? Your mama named you after somebody in the Bible. There's greatness in you. He has, she, there was a purpose for her naming you in, in 2018. You got a name and then you 10 years old. Abraham, who names her child Abraham? There's a purpose your mama named you Benjamin. These are old names, right? Great names. So the Bible says the first thing that was done, the thing that was lacking before it became the best, the better, the greater, it had to be spoken to. And if there's nobody speaking into your life, start speaking into your own life. Start calling yourself great. I'm the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. No greater work than the work that he did when he created me. You start speaking into your own life. You get in the mirror and start declaring the I am's of God over your life. I am the righteousness of God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. I am blessed when I lay down and when I rise up. I am. You start speaking over your own life, the greatness that God has put in you. You don't feel like you're that great mother or that great wife or that great husband or that great father yet. You feel like your kids from Mars. <laughs> I remember that. Women are from Mars. Men are, men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. Start speaking. My children, my children are great. My children are obedient. My children are awesome. My children are the favor of God. My children are obedient. My children follow after God hard. My children are believers in Jesus Christ. You start speaking the greatness that you want in your children, in your husband. My husband is a man of valor. Hallelujah. My husband is wise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My husband makes great decisions. My husband is an awesome leader. You start speaking that. You start speaking over your wife. My wife is a woman. Of, of high moral character, single or not. Start praying it and declaring it now. I'm telling you, your greatness awaits you. And the Bible says it's in your lips. It's right between your lips, on your tongue. Start speaking it. Start speaking it. So it was spoken to. It was recognized that there was a lack. And then there was. it was spoken to. And then there was a move of God. So I keep telling you, you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you to tell him, this is what I believe I'm lacking. Or Lord, show me what I'm lacking to take me from good to great. Yes, valor, hallelujah. To take me from where I am to where you desire for me to be. What is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to be doing? What is it that you need for me to present glory to God? What is it? Ah, glory to God. What is it that you need for me to present? Presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God, for that is your reasonable act of worship. What is it that you need for me to present? Jesus said, present those pots and fill them. Present that body. Present your life to God. Present your vision. Present your purpose. Present what it is you think you should be doing. You think this is what I want to do. You, you don't, you're not sure, but present it to God. Present it to God and ask him to touch it. Ask him to fill it. The Bible says that when communion was taken, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. No. Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, then he broke it, and then he gave it. I think it's important for you to understand whatever your assignment is in life, whatever your assignment is in life, that you have to be taken. You have to be presented to Christ. Christ has to bless it. That was him turning the water into wine. And then it has to be broken, shared, among, and given. 
anyone who believes that they have a call in their life, whether it's ministry, call as a mom, there's a calling to be a mom. There is a calling to be a wife. There's a calling to be a husband. There is a calling to be a father. I, there's a calling. You, you're chosen for that. Now, some of you could feel like, oh, I didn't choose to be a daddy at 17. I kind of snuck up on me. I didn't choose to be a mom, you know, at 14, 15. It just, you know, I, I did some stuff. <laughs> and now I was, I was pregnant. Okay, amen. But God allowed that child to come forth, which means him allowing the child to come forth means that you were meant to be a father. You were meant to be a mother. Maybe not at that age, but he allowed the child to come forth. And so you're a father. It is an assignment to be a parent. It's an assignment. Whether you're a spiritual parent, you're a parent to many. You know, the Bible talks about the barren woman who has many children. And so you, whether you are chosen by God to physically birth a child and be a part of that process by planting your seed and being the mom that births the child, or you are a, a, a mother or a father to many, what's important is that you understand you have been chosen. So it's not just pulpit ministry. It's not just pulpit ministry. Any way that you serve God, and you ra raising your children in the fear and the admiration of the Lord is serving God. And so it's important that you understand the process of your life. I'm going to talk, I'm going to teach this later. I'm not going to stay right here because I hear the Lord telling me to teach on you being the communion sacrifice. Oh my God. You are the communion sacrifice. You are. So here we are with this wine. And it's turned in, water is turned into wine. And somewhere before in the dipping, in the speaking, the water is turned into wine. And when it's presented to the groomsman or the bride's father, he says, this is, this is the good stuff. Y'all serving this early. He says, and when the head waiter tasted the water which had been turned into wine, not knowing where it came from, even, the, even though the servants knew where it came from. This is where you, one of the places that you can't get twisted. People will, they don't know your journey, right? They don't know what it's, what it's taking you to even get to good when you just used to be okay, when, when you was raggedy, but now you good and you're trying to go from good to great. They don't understand your journey. They don't understand your sacrifice. They don't understand your crying out to God. They don't understand you saying, God, why this is happening and why has that happened? And God says, I'm just perfecting the things that concern you. I got to get you ready so that your gift don't, gifts take you where your character can't keep you. I don't need your gifts to take you. Hallelujah. The, your, the sweetness of your wine with all your gifts and your talents and your abilities to take you where your character can't keep you. So I need to work you out in this process. I need to take you through this process. Now, this process of turning water into wine was sudden, was instantaneous. We know that our journey will not always be that way. I tell people that, I'm just going to be real transparent right here. I tell people that when I went to God and said, God, I want to wait for my husband. I don't want to enter into uh, relations with a man until I'm married. I did not know that it would the journey would be uh, this long. I did not know that when I made that confession to the Lord. But I have I have often said that even though I made the confession, I believe it was God who put it in my heart to make the confession. And it wasn't that Sister Tuesday had been out there doing all of this and that. That wasn't it. It was just that I had found this conviction in my spirit that I wanted to wait. Now, other things that I struggle with, uh, I had to keep coming back to God. And one of them, I've given the testimony that my hands weren't clean. Uh, I, I used to steal starting as a teenager. And I said, Lord, I want to keep my hands clean and my heart pure. I had to keep coming to God for that. I had to keep praying. I had to fast. I was like, Lord, I, I, this is crazy. And the Lord told me, 
he was very clear with me about why I was being tempted in certain things that I was being tempted in. And listen, let me help you with something. If you're a liar, if you struggle with lying, telling the truth, Partly it's because God wants to use your mouth to speak the truth. And so the enemy is going to tempt you to struggle with the thing and the place where God wants to use you most powerfully. So my body being a living sacrifice as a minister of the gospel and having that testimony that that is how God wanted to set me apart and consecrate me. The Bible says in Corinthians that to the virgin, virgin, Paul says, I don't really have any instruction about sexual immorality because you're good. But that don't mean that the virgin can't be a liar. It doesn't mean that the virgin can't be a thief. It doesn't mean that the virgin can't have a bad attitude, male or female, good God almighty. You know, you just mean, hallelujah. You, you, you have trust issues. So there are other things that you can be struggling with. Even though God deals with this over here, you still got to deal with that over here. But because people don't know your struggle, they don't know your struggle. They don't know the fullness of your testimony. So when they taste you, good God almighty, when they taste you, when they encounter you, they might get a little bitterness. Or they might get something that, that's, oh, my, she just too nice. He just too nice. I mean, people just run over you because you too nice. But they don't understand you used to be a mean scoundrel. And God has softened your heart. And so you have to have that balance. They don't know your testimony. They don't know why you can be quick and you can be sharp with people. Because maybe you still have some hurt in you. Maybe your wine ain't been all the way turned sweet. Maybe it ain't ready to be served yet. Maybe it ain't ready to be served. The Bible says that God, the word says in the Old Testament, Old Testament Ephraim, you are half baked, which means one side of them was baked and the other side wasn't. So sometimes you got to be turned, right? So both sides can be baked. So all parts and all aspects of your life can be dealt with and you can't rush God in that process. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't want to take you from good to great. But you've got to go through the process. So he takes that wine to the groomsman or to uh, the, the, uh, the bride's father. And he says, well, wait a minute now. What is this? Y'all, y'all serving the, the best stuff now. He said, you're serving the greater now. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Everyone else serves the best wine, the greatest wine first when the people have drunk freely. So now they're, they're, um, they're drunk. So they, they serve the best wine uh, up front. He said uh, everyone else serves their best wine first. And when people have drunk freely and they are intoxicated, he says, uh, then they serve the wine at the end, uh, but you have kept back the good until now. So, in the, and I think I said that incorrectly in the front. They serve the best wine up front, and then they serve the bad wine at the end. Because you're drunk, you don't care, right? So wine, let me help you to understand what wine represented. Wine represented, wine was a relational um, drink. It was a, it was, it built, it built community. Okay. So it was about coming together in community. You didn't drink wine just to sit around and get drunk. You drank wine for fellowship. You came together for fellowship in wine. So it wasn't about you getting your Moscato or your Zinfandel, amen, or your, your sweet red wine or you know, your sweet white wine or whatever it was, your Chardonnay. It wasn't about that. It wasn't to get drunk. It was for fellowship. And so when they drank wine, and I really uh, want to, um, hold on, guys. Let me look up something. Hold on. Hold on. Don't leave me. Hold on. 
And so, here we go. So, when they would uh, drink wine, it was, it also represented, um, how do I want to say this, Holy Spirit? Um, it represented, I want to say this correctly because I want to make sure you get this. Wine was, the, the better the wine, it also represented a level of prosperity, right? So you serving the best wine up front also could indicate kind of how you was rolling. But one of the things I really wanted to touch on was how it, um, it represented process. There we go. It represented process because you could not get to wine unless wine had been processed as from a grape. So it's the it was the process. It also represented the process. So when his mom came to him, when Mary came to him and said, "Hey, it, it ain't it ain't no more wine," and Jesus was like, "What they got to do with me?" He knew that required him to manifest a miracle. It required him to manifest a miracle because you couldn't just go buy wine. You couldn't just run up to Walmart. What's that place here? 21, 21st century, 20 somebody century spirits or something. <laughs> you had to literally the wine, the, the grapes, you had to try them. You, they, you had to go through the firmament how long the wine had to sit to even become the better wine, the greater wine, the best wine, right? It sat much longer for weeks before they would serve that wine. I want to I want to say this. Don't be in a rush in your process. Don't be in a rush to be to go from good to great. It's going to happen. You have to identify what is it? What is it in the process that I need to work on? You got to let it be spoken to, which means you probably are going to have to be accountable to someone who sees greatness in you that can speak to the greatness in you and call the greatness in you forth. And then you are going to need to be tested to go from good to great you're going to be tested. That's what the uh, the, the cupbearer did. He tested. Not only did he taste the wine, he tested the wine before it was taken to the groomsmen or to the bride's father. Yes, 21st. That's crazy. Is that what it's called? Amen. And so you got to be tested and tasted. You got to, because we, we got, the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Jesus was already tested. The cross already tested him. It already qualified him to say he was ready. He was already tested. And now we taste him and see that he's good. He's good. We want to use him. We want to keep him in our lives. That's what God needs you to understand this morning, to go from good to great. You got to recognize what's lacking. It has to be spoken to. It has to then be start the process of change. And then it has to be tested before it's tasted. And all of it requires a touch from Jesus. You need a touch from God. You need a touch from God. Ask him to touch you this morning. Ask him to feel you this morning. Ask him to feel you again. So you too can go from good to great. Wine represents the process. The process of going from good to great. The process of going from moving from mediocre, good to the best. God wants you to be the best in all that you do. And all that he has called and created you to do and to be. And you have to surrender to that. And so it is my prayer that you desire to go from good to great. Not so that you can be great, 
but God will make your name great and making your name great. His name will be great. He, he said he ain't going to share his glory with nobody. He's not going to share his glory. So don't go from good to great and only talk about you. You got to give God glory. You got to tell God I'm where I'm at because of God. I got what I got because of God. I'm able to teach the way that I teach because of God. The only reason I am up at this time of the morning is because of God. And that's just absolutely, positively the truth. Hallelujah. This ain't of none of my doing that I would want to be up at this time of the day. It is the love of God that requires me and compels me. I've had people say, you should do your call later in the day. You would get so many people. Well, the, those who are on here are committed. And eventually they will share, they will tag, they will post, they will tell other people. And this fourth hour watch prayer will grow. And if God tells me to move to another hour of the day, I will. If he says do the other hour of the day and do this, I'll do that. Because my desire is to be great for God. It's not about, you know, I, I remember long ago someone in ministry, um, I was at a retreat and they asked the question, do you want to be famous or do you want to be faithful? Great question for those in ministry. Do you want to be famous or do you want to be faithful? Do you want your name up in lights or do you want to be the light of the world? Just questions. Questions to ask yourself as you go from good to great. Because it's necessary to remain humble as you go from good to great. Greatness draws people to you. And in that drawing, you receive more recognition. Your name is going to be called, but be careful as people call your name. Because the Bible says that Jesus, after he turned that water into wine, the Bible says Jesus went and chilled. He didn't go off letting everybody know, this is who I am. <laughs> That's not what he did. That's not what he did. The Bible says, let me put my glasses on because I want you to be clear. The Bible says that, uh, the Bible says that this was the first sign. This was the first sign that Jesus did in Canaan of Galilee that revealed his glory and displayed his deity and his great power. His disciples believed and put their confidence in him and they adore, at, uh, at her, adhered to what he said. They trusted him and they relied on him. After that, he went to Capernaum and his mother and his brothers and disciples stayed where they were for a few days. It was time for the Passover. So he went out there let, you know, somebody then said, oh my God, you are a great preacher and you then went and got a bar. I, I've been in ministry, I would say, I preached my first sermon at 33. I started the journey at about 30 or 31. And um, I just bought my first bar. I just bought it. Someone has spoken that you are going to be great at this, you're great at that. But you may be great at it, you're gifted, you're talented, but I just said don't let your gifts and talents take you where your character can't keep you. That does not mean that even in your journey you won't have struggles. You will have struggles. You will not arrive to perfection until you're on your way to glory. This isn't about you being perfect. This is about you recognizing what it is that you're lacking and you can present that to God as the living sacrifice and still be holy and pleasing unto him because that is your reasonable act of worship. So we are going from good to great. God, I pray. I pray that someone allows you to touch them today. I pray that someone allows that thing that's missing that will take them from good to great, I pray that they allow it to be identified. If they trust someone who can identify it and speak into it, and if it's not them that sees it, they allow someone whom they trust and that love them 
who will say, I see this in you and I see that in you. And God wants to make you great in this area. Husbands to wives and wives to husbands and parents to children and friends to friends and brothers and sisters in Christ, God. I pray that we can see so we can say and call forth what it is that is in our brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord. And then, God, I pray that they give it back to you so that you can touch it, so you can touch that thing, so you can touch that thing and bring it forth and call it forth in the name of Jesus. God, I pray it to be so. Hallelujah, God. I pray, God, that, hallelujah, that they will, they will allow the process to go forth in their lives so that they can be tested and fully vetted, hallelujah, for the assignment that you have for them. And after they're, they're tested, they will be tasted. And someone will see and know because of the words that are coming out of their mouth that what they are doing and what they are sent to do is of you, Lord. I thank you for the testing and Lord have mercy. I thank you, God, for the tempting, for the testing and the tasting. Oh, God, I thank you for those who have been tempted and they have not gone beyond what they can bear. They have not gone past what they can bear. But when we're tested, he has given us a way of escape. When we are tempted, he has given us a way of escape. God, help somebody to understand this morning. They can escape temptation, but they have to go through the testing. They can escape temptation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But they got to go through the testing so that they can be tasted, glory to God, so that they can be vetted for the purpose and the assignment that God has over their lives. God, I thank you this morning. I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was a word for somebody. You can escape the temptation, but you got to go through the testing so that you can be tasted. And they will see that the Lord is good in you and he can serve you as he takes you in, as he blesses you, as he breaks you so he can serve you. God, I thank you. And I love you. I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. Hello, Pastor Sarah. Bless, your, bless the Lord this morning. Hello. Hello, Sister Hall. Hallelujah. God, I, I pray that you all heard something this morning that was a blessing to your soul, that blessed your spirit, that helped you to grow closer to God, to go from faith to faith and glory to glory, to understand how to go from good to great. It is truly, it begins with our submitting ourselves to God. It begins with our submitting ourselves to God, submitting our gifts, submitting our talents, submitting our abilities, submitting our dreams, submitting everything that we desire and everything that we want over to him and watch him do the rest. I love you with the love of the Lord. I pray God's blessing over your life, and I speak his greatness into you. Thank you, uh, Sister uh, Yvette, for your prayers. I thank you how you, I thank you for sealing me every Tuesday um, with the word of God and the prayers of God. I thank you. I thank each of you for your sacrifice to join me this morning on these Tuesdays with two Tuesdays, fourth watch, power, prayer, and teaching. Be blessed today. Be encouraged. You are going from good to great. I'll see you next week.